Okay, today's video, we're going to talk about doing the head gasket on the Hemi. This car happens to be the uh, Dodge Challenger, but also works for the Dodge Ram and Dodge Charger with the Hemi V8 5.7 liter. First thing we're going to do is take off the cover. It just pulls right up. Next, we're going to take off this air intake right here. Remove the intake air temp sensor. On the passenger side, you will see the drain for the radiator. Make sure to catch the coolant. Next, I'm taking off these two 13 millimeter bolts. I'm going to pull this off and tuck it to the side. That will allow you to take out the thermostat, which we're replacing anyways. Use a 3 8 ratchet to take the tension off of the serpentine belt by placing it into the square of the belt tensioner and turning it this way. Remove the EVAP line from the throttle and place it over to the side and move it from there as well. To take off the fuel line, you're going to compress these two tabs together and pop it off. Once the red tab is up, push on the little black tab and pull the full clip off. Sorry, like that. You are going to remove all eight of them. Four on this side, four on that side. Now the coil wires, all eight of them, temp sensor, throttle body. Don't forget one more temp sensor right behind, or right next to the thermostat. That clip right here. Next you have the map sensor on the back of the intake. Push the red clip out and take it off. To give yourself more room, pull these wire clips right out like that next you're going to remove all the eight millimeter bolts holding the entire intake manifold down they are along the perimeter once they're all loose pry right here to kind of crack it up once that's loose pull it up that will allow you to pull it out just enough to remove this clip for the wires and that vacuum line now it's time to remove all the coils, all eight of them, two bolts each, 16 bolts total. Next is the valve cover bolts, eight millimeter bolts around along the perimeter. On this side, you're gonna have a little less room. I recommend using quarter inch drive. Since we are replacing the reservoir anyways, it makes it easier to remove the eight millimeter valve cover bolts back there. Next, you're gonna to need to remove the ground wires and this bracket on both sides of the head ground wire bracket that connects to this water pump assembly right here jack up the car make sure to use jack stands and a jack for extra safety now that the car is jacked up remove the downpipe bolts from the exhaust manifold or the nuts that one and that one Next is the power steering pump. There are three 10 millimeter bolts. The best way to do it is to go through the pulley and get to all three of them. Sometimes they will be 13 millimeter bolts. Next, remove the bolt holding on the oil dipstick. It's going to be right behind there. In this case, it's a 10 millimeter, but it could be a 13 or a 15. Next, you're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolts holding down the rocker arm assembly along here on both sides. Keep track of which one goes where and this side as well. You are also going to keep track of the push rods that you pull out. Before you start doing the head bolts, you're going to reach back on both sides and disconnect the O2 sensor clip on both sides the upper O2 sensor. Now that the push rods and the rocker assemblies are out of the way, we are going to start taking off the cylinder head bolts. First, we're going to remove all the 10 millimeter bolts on the inside of the cylinder heads. Then we're going to loosen up these 15 millimeter bolts. We're going to start by cracking and opening 
uh, these ones on the end, then those on the end, then these ones, and these ones, and these ones. You're going to loosen them and loosen them up partially. And then once they're all loose, then you can pull them out. Now that the head bolts are out, you can use a standard screwdriver to kind of pop up the cylinder head. Don't pop it up too high, though. See it shaking there? You know it's all loose. It's ready to pull out. Now, before you send your heads out to get checked and resurfaced, make sure to take off all the accessories to it. Leave the valves on. You're going to check those. But take off the exhaust manifold. Take off the little bracket right here. Keep track of which one's the driver's side, which one's the passenger side. Okay, once you get your heads back, don't worry if there's still some carbon right here. One thing that matters is uh, the valves are sealed properly. It's nice and resurfaced. I'm going to start putting it all back together. We're going to be using the HS26423 from Felpro, American made. When you place the cylinder head in, you're going to gently place it in, of course, put the head gasket first. And be sure not to move it around and uh, risk scratching up the, the mating surface. Head bolts. The first thing you want to do is soak them in some oil. Then you're going to put them in the cylinder head. Once you have all the head bolts in, you can just uh, use a ratchet to um, go, go in until it's uh, butted up. So then you can use a torque wrench. Okay, I'll try to make the torque sequence as clear as possible. First off, you have the 12mm uh, bolts, which actually have the 15mm head. We're going to tighten up this, starting from the center, at 25 foot-pounds. So we're going to... Got the torque wrench here. We're going to 25 foot-pounds. A little bit of a reach trying to reach back there but and last one in that far corner okay now the uh Larger bolts are torqued down to 25. I'm going for the 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to lower it down to 15 foot pounds. That'll be these 10 millimeter bolts right here. Now we're going to go back to the larger head bolts. We're going to set the torque wrench to 40 foot pounds. Let's go 40 right there. Starting from the center. Now we set the torque wrench back to 15 foot-pounds, all the way back. And we are retightening these middle ones.
Now it's time for the large head bolts again. Now we're going to tighten these to 90 degrees. So from 12 to 3, from 3 to 6, or so on and so forth. Start with the middle one. So if it's that angle, I'm going to bring it to here at this angle. Right there. If I can't get a full swing, I would do two 45 degree turns. I'm going to go 45 degree. Now, put the torque wrench to 25. And we're going to do the last bit of torque on the 10 millimeter head bolts. And that's it. Now we're going to do the same with the other side. Same process. Okay, now that the heads are torqued down, time to put the ground wires back on with these that were holding it on both sides, along with the coolant pipe. Also, we need to hook up the O2 sensors on both exhaust manifolds. All right, so I apologize. On this part of the video, the uh, mic didn't seem to connect, so there's no audio to it but what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing the push rods and I'm putting them back into the same exact position where I pulled them out of. Each one goes back to where they belong. The rocker arm assembly and the four 10, 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on are finger tight, just a few threads to give you enough room to push those rocker arms into the cup of the, I'm sorry, push the uh, push rods into the cup of the rocker arms uh, before you tighten up any of those four or five or ten millimeter bolts holding the rocker assembly down you want to make sure each one of the push rods have uh, have been placed into the cup of the rocker and also you want to put it uh, make sure it's hooked up with the lifter And now is not the time to be cheap. Replace the valve cover gaskets. Don't reuse them. As well as the intake manifold gaskets. Take out these eight squares, put the new ones in. When it comes time to put the intake manifold on, do not forget about that vacuum line and the map sensor connector that goes in the back. Make sure all the wires are out of the way. 
then place it straight down. When tightening the intake manifold, tighten up all the 8 millimeter bolts evenly. Start one side, next side, and then start tightening them. Now we're going to hook up all the fuel injectors. Fuel injectors, the fuel line. We're going to put a new thermostat in and put the hose back over there to hook the EVAP back up. This goes to the purge valve. This elbow goes to the top of the throttle. Don't forget the three bolts holding up the power steering pump. To make the serpentine belt easier to put on, leave the thermostat outlet or the water outlet where the thermostat housing is off. Now that the belt is on, we can put the thermostat housing together with a new thermostat. Now time for the new coolant reservoir. Please make sure to use new plugs. Alright, stop. It's coil time. Don't forget to hook up the exhaust. Don't forget to close up the drain on the radiator. Put the intake tube back on. And then you're ready to start. After you fill up with coolant, of course. Okay, now the job is basically done. Put new oil, new filter, new coolant. Um, monitor it. If you have a good scanner, check for misfires. Good luck.